five, so let's get started. Hello again. Um, for those just joining, I'm Amy Lewin. Um, really excited to greet everyone this evening and just find a space to where we can all talk. Um, I'm the Cleveland PTA president. Uh, it's my second year doing this as a volunteer, and I'm just so grateful to the many uh, board members who have stepped in to help volunteer this year. It's a year like no other. Um, and uh, I thought I could say that last year with fairness, but boy, this is a whole new experience. Um, but it's been really fun to be able to create community through these Zoom calls. Um, for those who haven't been able to, please be sure to mark your calendars. The third Wednesdays of the month, we're meeting via Zoom. Um, and our new principal, Joanne Watkins, has joined us at the top of each one of those meetings for a good half hour or more to give us updates. And I wanna thank her so much for that, um, especially in this time where we're all trying to stay updated and stay connected. Having this space on Zoom has been, it's not the library, but it's been really nice. So um, with that, um, I just wanna, again, um, reflect and say hi. It's good to see everyone. Uh, we have a full panel this evening but we also have a full audience. And um, I just wanna greet you all with um, just a hello. Uh, we are recording this. I'm recording it over here. Um, and so I'll do my best to upload it later this evening. So if you have friends that weren't able to join this evening, um, encourage them to look on the PTA Facebook page um, and we'll try to share a link later this evening or early tomorrow morning. And I'm sure Janet Morgan, who's our e-news editor, will um, share as well on uh, next Monday's e-news edition as well. Um, I'm, let's see. Yeah, so uh, with that, um, I just want to go over a few, few points of uh, interest before we get started. Um, first, I, I want to thank uh, Janet and JJ and Joanne for helping organize this evening. Um, this is normally when we do a New Families 101 uh, panel in our library where we talk about um, what it's like to be in the ninth grade at Cleveland and starting high school. But um, as we all know, this is new. Distance learning is new for all of us. So we thought we'd just tip it a little bit and do an overview of how we support each other as a whole community and all the families involved in that. So really grateful uh, for Principal Watkins for helping organize a full panel. Um, and I want to be sure we spend time giving everyone an opportunity to share their details. This is a night where we're creating a space for discussion and I'm glad the PTA was able to support the community in that end. Um, it's important for us all to hear where things, how things are going, um, where more support might be needed. And I know there are a lot of questions um, and I want to thank all the staff and administrators who joined us this evening who are making themselves available. Um, in the evening to answer those questions and do their best to facilitate that information. We've designed the panel so that um, it's a place for you to hear. Um, we've facilitated some questions from the community already and they're separated out into kind of three subject areas, support for students, distance learning and technology, attendance and then other. So we'll go through those um, and then if there are any additional questions, I just encourage you to use the chat function as well. Um, I'm, again, because there are so many and it's Zoom and we're all in this room together, please uh, mute yourself, but use the chat function to do that engagement should that feel comfortable to you. Um, again, I am recording this uh, for those listening. Uh, let's see. Um, we're going to try to stay focused on one question at a time. I'll do my best to monitor the chat conversation and um, call out any questions there as well. I think it's just really important. We were talking about this too, and um, how do we center this? I know there's a lot of anxiety. I think there's a lot of questions we're all sharing. And as someone professionally, you know, my, we've had professional challenges in how we do our work. And so we're all in this experience together, um, working and learning remotely. And um, this is an evening where we can at least talk about that and figure out what can we do to support each other. So I just want to center in that space. We're not here to manage all the complaints. Um, we're going to do our best to facilitate information and answers. Um, and if the answers can't be had tonight, um, I, I know our principal is committed to following up. I've seen it and I thank her for that. And so um, we'll just flag those and do our best to follow up and communicate out to the community as well. So with that, um, I wanna introduce the panel. Um, we have a, a great set of folks and we'll start with our principal. Joanne Watkins. 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for taking time to join us. Uh, I'm really looking forward to um, uh, interacting with you this evening. And also, I'm really looking forward for you to meet some of the staff. Uh, some of the staff you may be very familiar with. And if you're new to Cleveland, we're all new to you. Um, but it's my pleasure to be um, the principal at Cleveland High School. And I'm starting off my principalship in distance learning. And so um, that has some pluses and some minuses. Um, one of the things that I will say is that I've been really deeply honored to work with the teaching staff at Cleveland so far and the counseling staff. Um, and quite frankly, all of the staff, they're deeply engaged, really uh, working through problems together, supporting each other. Um, and I can really see that they're keeping the students at the center, even though we know that all of us are experiencing the stresses of living through a pandemic. And so that's what keeps me going, um, you know, every day is knowing their commitment um, to their craft and um, to each other and to the school community. Though I will say for me, a, a big downside is not to be able to see you in person, not to see you up at that library, to have to have uh, filmed the back to school night in the auditorium. Basically, I was going to say by myself, but Sean Murray and Jan Wild were helping me. Uh, I, and it, you know, at times it feels really disconnected and isolating. Um, and so it's really makes me thankful that everyone here has taken the time um, to show up this evening. Thank you. Um, I asked each panelist just to share a little bit about their role at the school and then sort of the thumbs up and the thumbs down of this moment in time. And uh, Sean, I'm going to let you introduce yourself next. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Sean Murray. I'm a first year vice principal at Cleveland, but I've been fortunate enough to be a part of the Cleveland community as a teacher for four years coming in. Um, I use he, him pronouns. Um, and I am in, I oversee special education and social studies, as well as students that are attached to Neil Gibson and Jen Van Kopp. Um, and I'm the very lucky administrator that gets to be in charge of attendance. So I suspect I will be fielding more than a couple of questions this evening. Um, a, a rose. So one of the things that happened in the springtime, I had a student that I was working with um, who really, really struggled in math um, and he just, he just didn't get it and he would, constantly talked to me about how he really just did not like math. He was never going to get it and he was never going to figure it out. And about a month into distance learning, he sent me a private message um, that for whatever reason, through the distance learning model and in working with his teachers, it was clicking. Um, it was clicking in a way that it hadn't before. And so even though he was meeting his third year of math requirement, he was voluntarily going to take a fourth year because he all of a sudden found um, a passion and something that he was interested in in, in math. So. I wouldn't say that's the majority, but it certainly is happening for some students. Um, and as far as the thorns, I, I think the hardest thing for me is I, um, I love to be around students. And so even shifting from being a teacher to an administrator, I was really worried that I wasn't going to get that connection anymore and that fulfillment. Um, and now with this, it's even more so, right? Like to walk into an empty school building um, can be challenging without seeing students around. Thank you. Um, so we'll go next to Kelly Cook, our athletic director. You all hear me fine. Your audio is a little clippy. You may have to um, stop the video for a second. Okay. Um, let me switch out of the. Is that better? Okay. It's a little better. I often have problems with Zoom. Okay, <laughs> so um, I'm the athletic director, so I am in charge of athletics um, at Cleveland. And um, so that's been hard. Um, we're talking about our thorns. Um, my usual spring was very different. My usual fall has been very different. I'm missing seeing the kids playing in the gym, um, Friday night at the stadium. So that's been hard. Uh, but our rose, um, this week we got permission from the district to bring activities back. And so we've had two days of having kids come to the stadium and interact with their coaches six feet apart. We're all wearing masks. Um, you know, I'm checking all the kids their mom or the temperatures when they come in. So it's quite a process. Uh, but that has by far been my rose from the last seven months when we stopped doing sports altogether. So 
um, that's, that's been a really good rose, so. Awesome, thank you. Um, so we'll go to Amanda next. Okay, so I'm Amanda Weber Welch, uh, she, her pronouns, and I'm one of five counselors at Cleveland High School. So your child will have one of five of us. I'm connected with Tillamook Academy for ninth graders and, um, and boy, counselors do a variety of roles within the school. We're responsible for orienting and helping to support new students um, and struggling students and all students. Uh, we do 504 support and updating. We change schedules and boy, we've had a lot of schedules to change. Uh, we do transcripts, help kids towards graduation, sign them up for night school, and we do social and emotional counseling and support for kids, connecting with families, um, connecting with teachers. And then my additional role this year as well is to help coordinate college um, going support. So if you have a senior, I'm the person who's been sending you a lot of emails and connections with all things college and all of that. We have a new system, um, uh, interesting to have a completely new system also online this year, but a new system called Maya Learning um, as well. So, and my, so a rose that I've found that I really like is the ease of Google, of Google Meet and being able to connect with students and families pretty rapidly when we can get an appointment together. Um, so that's been a real positive thing. And the negative is definitely the struggle with locating kids who um, are not as easily connected in that way. So in, um, in the days of regular school, I was always in the hall and could just go find a student really quickly if I needed them. And that's become uh, much more of a barrier in the online circumstance. So thank you, nice to be here. Thank you. And I just want to note for those who just joined, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm doing my best to facilitate and the waiting room keeps filling up, but welcome. Please mute yourself. If you have questions this evening, we're going to get started with some questions. Please feel free to use the chat function. I'd like to introduce Mr. Hunter next. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. I uh, want to say that we certainly do appreciate the PTA. Uh, you certainly have been very supportive of my program and so I'm happy and honored to be here tonight. Uh, I am the student success advocate and the restorative justice coordinator for the building. And um, I am excited. Uh, I guess my roles would be that um, I'm excited about our new administration administrators that are on, our vice principal, Sean, and our new principal, Joanne. Uh, I get a really good positive feeling from them and so, I'm excited about what we're gonna do in the year to come. I guess my heartbreak would be, uh, since I do really care about the students, which they are number one, that they don't have um, the access to the building, to the teachers, the one-on-one -on -one contact, which I think is so extremely important. And I know it's frustrating for them and uh, also for our staff because um, things are frustrating for them as well. So I guess that would be my thumbs down. Thank you, I think we can all relate. Uh, Jan Watt, you're next. Hi there, um, believe it or not, I'm not dust yet. Um, I am the special projects uh, coordinator at Cleveland and uh, my role is event work which has been compromised by all of this. I am going to admit to you that my thorns are numerous. Um, I am a person who believes strongly that education and relationships are foundational. And my uh, thrill in coming to work each day, frankly, is to see kids. And my lack of contact with kids has been a significant dilemma for me. Um, they are my lifeblood and they're why I'm still there. The good, however, uh, I hope everybody acknowledges is the Cleveland staff. I am absolutely um, amazed 
at how they continue to exhibit the dedication and the caring that they're doing. Their jobs are insurmountably difficult. Uh, they are faced with a uh, lack of support and uh, technology woes and obstacles every single day. But this is an extremely strong group of educators and I'm really proud, very, very proud to work with them. And with due respect to everybody else that's on here, it is so awesome for me to see Fiona. I finally am looking at a student. I don't like it being on the screen, but I get to see a student and my buddy Charles. Charles Hunter and I are very close and I have missed him. Dan, thank you for that. Oh. Your, your audio cut out right there at the end. I'm sorry if I cut you off. Did you have anything you wanted to add there, Jan? Okay. Um, so let's go with uh, Kristen and Fiona. You can introduce yourself. Sure. Great. Hi, I'm Kristen Sherwood and I am the parent of a senior uh, and a sophomore right here. Um, so we have, we're in our fourth year with the Cleveland community. Um, I also teach uh, at Clark College up in Vancouver and I teach a class called College 101. And one component of that class is introducing students how to use Canvas. Um, Clark uses Canvas, so I've been using Canvas and teaching with Canvas for the last I don't know, at least eight years. Um, so I have familiarity with Canvas from a teacher angle. Um, I'm well equipped with the student view, um, but I haven't, to be honest, done too much with the girls in their Canvas. I've seen it, but I haven't engaged more than a viewing of it. However, I'm, I'm really familiar with Canvas and happy to talk about that with anyone. Um, offline too if tonight there's a lot of other more pressing people so that's just put that out there um uh rose and a thorn um i have had more flexibility in the mornings i'm not off to work in quite the same way so i've been able to get some good walks in with my friends um and that's been nice at a socially distant six feet apart kind of a thing. Um, and I'm also becoming much more familiar, frankly, with teaching online. I've never done it. I much prefer teaching in person. I love students. I miss my students. Um, but I have long known I should learn how to use Canvas. And uh, I'm sorry, I, I know how to use Canvas to teach with Canvas and now, or teach online, and now I am. So the thorn is watching my kids miss their people. So. It's as simple as that. Just they're missing all of the important interaction that you get at school with your peers and your teachers in person. I'm Fiona. I'm a sophomore. Um, my rose is just being able to be like at home in my own environment. I think that that can help me like be productive sometimes, like getting to do things my own way. Um, my thorn is definitely just missing out on like the interactive parts of school, like seeing my friends and like football games, stuff like that. It's just like hard to miss out on that. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen and Fiona. And Fiona, thanks for volunteering to join us as a student in this uh, environment. Um, you're, you're, it's nice to have that perspective here this evening. So. Um, I, for those just joining, we received several questions from the um, community over the last week and a half, and Janet was able to facilitate those in a nice chart for me this evening. Um, in summary, there are about eight or more questions around support for students, seven questions around distance learning technology, a few around attendance. Uh, Sean Murray, thank you for the uh, email yesterday on clarifications around attendance. There might still be a few more questions this evening. And then a few other, seven other kind of non-themed questions. So um, I'm gonna start with one that, I think we got a few versions of this question and it's really, Joanne, you might wanna start this one answer off and maybe tee it up to another uh, colleague. It's about uh, communication and um, how do we um, find uniform communication paths? Um, there's a lot of unique challenges as we, as we all know in this digital engagement. Um, but one thing a few parents have pointed out is finding that consistent place to look for updates or where, where teachers are putting updates. Some are using Remind, some are sending emails, some are using School Messenger. 
Um, and just wondering what how you as a team have been approaching consistent communications paths. Um, is there anything um, that would be helpful for us as a community to know? Because it feels like a lot is coming at us. Uh, that's a very good question. And uh, I've been meeting with my team to try to streamline communications because uh, we've also heard from students too that they're getting communications via Remind and via email and really wanting to have things streamlined. Um, so one of the things that we're going to start implementing is a weekly bulletin. Um, that'll be, we're going to, I think we're calling it the Warrior, Warrior Weekly. It'll be linked on our website. And it can, um, and the document will highlight, you know, events that are happening. It's targeted at both parents and students. There'll be links to like the Career Center. So then you can see what announcements are there. There'd be opportunities for Amanda Weber Welsh to post anything about um, college, college applications, scholarships, um, leadership to post, athletics to post. It's, it'll be a linked document um, and we should be rolling that out, I would say, um, in the coming week. Uh, one of the challenges that we have had is we had um, quite a bit of a turnover actually in our support staff and we've uh, recently hired um, two and a half, two and a half secretaries, um, but I, um, they've really hit the ground running. Um, and so one of the first things that they did was really figure out how to get the phones answered. Um, so we do have um, phone coverage um, throughout the week, uh, either with staff coming into the building or um, we're using um, phones forwarded to uh, Google Voice. So you would be able to actually talk to someone and, and um, leave a message. Um, believe it or not, my office phone um, actually has my name on it now, and I've recorded a message. Uh, but I want to remind everyone, <laughs> I want to remind everyone as well that when you receive, if you receive an email from me, that there's a phone number in my signature line, and that phone number is my district cell number, um, and I'm using that also as an office number, and you can certainly feel free to call that number. Um, and I say the same thing in a voicemail message if you call and, and call Cleveland and, and, and push for the principal. You'll hear that as well, that you can uh, reach out on my district cell. So we're, we're doing that. We're also looking at uh, the, pot, we're exploring the possibility of adopting an, an app for primarily for students, but parents will be able to download it as well. That again, pushes information about what's going on at the school, including information about clubs and activities um elections you know any any kind of events but also lets the students know hey today is tuesday and the synchronous is you know five six and asynchronous is seven eight um and you know those features are built in as well as an easy way to contact staff um, via email we've heard from students that they would actually prefer getting messages uh pushed through canvas um, and so one of the pieces of work that we've been doing with the staff is working on uh, standardizing our use of Canvas. Um, the teachers have made, you know, quite frankly, uh, great strides in adopting this new learning management system. And some of their Canvas pages are, are really super well organized. And everything is laid out very well. And, and they're pushing information to the students. And so we'll continue. We're, you know, we're actually, we a survey went out to students. And I know uh, hopefully some of your students had an opportunity to reply about their feelings about the schedule, but as well as their use of Canvas. And we're using that data as well um, to inform our work um, as we're working together with staff. I think there's a lot. We could probably spend a whole hour talking about communication right now. I'm just thinking, looking in the chat and reflecting on that. So thank you for that brief answer for now. And, I, we may come back to that one. I want to talk a little bit um, about kind of support for students. We've got some team members here who are looking at that from a couple different angles. And one of the questions, um, well, I, I'm going to do a two part here. Um, is there a resource list for parents and students that includes contact information, emails or numbers for things like mental health, food, shelter needs, organizational supports, or tech support. So 
And I think embedded in that question is what happens if you're a parent and you're saying, I, I need to talk to someone to see if I can help get some help for a student? Or what if you're, you know, your friend of someone, you know, how do you, where is that resource and how does one access that in this remote environment? That's a tricky one. I, I, Amanda, I, I'm wondering from a counselor perspective what that might look like. Um, you, you had mentioned, you know, you're not in the hallways, so. Right. I think um, that is more of a challenge, especially if students are new to us. Uh, if we have students who've been on our caseload, we have more of a sense of that. Um, the way that our school structure is set up, we actually have a new social worker who's just coming on board uh, this year. And so um, many of you were probably familiar with Kate and um, and the way that we have structured a single um, social worker within a school is that families should reach out to the counselor first and then we um, we make the referral to our school social worker and there's a lot of resources that we also have. I would say as a secondary support, um, a new structure that we're having this year is linking our um, vice principals directly to a counselor caseload. So, Sean mentioned that he is connected to the caseloads of um, Jen Van Kopp as well as Neil Gibson. Uh, Margie Berrios Brown is connected to myself, Amanda Weber Welch, as well as um, to Nick Yoder. Nick Yoder is currently on paternity leave, and so Lori Butler is filling in for him. And then Heidi Tolentino's caseload is connected to um, Christy Mice. And so if you don't immediately hear from a counselor, and I will say we have, um, we have been negotiating um, hundreds of emails a day uh, and pretty crazy workload for the last two months. Um, and so if you don't hear immediately from us and it's urgent, um, please also feel free to reach out to one of those VPs as, um, as a secondary thing. And also if you call the, the school, those, um, those secretaries also will reach out to us directly if there's something urgent. Um, if you have something that is really time sensitive, I would put urgent in your email to us. Um, and also we just recently um, have received uh, flip phones. Um, so flip phones, we can, we can text, but I have to do the ABC to text. Um, so we have received that. And so um, we're also accessible in that way. And I can maybe piggyback on that a little bit, Amy, if that's okay. Um, another thing, as we're, as Amanda mentioned, a new social worker, we have a new student engagement coach. Um, and one of the things that is really, really important, I think, to, to everybody at Cleveland is making sure that we're connecting and figuring out which students are not connecting. Um, so right now, we're in the process of rolling out a form for teachers that are, they're going to be able to fill out that's going to help us track down which students aren't connecting. We've kind of been doing that um, a little bit informally through just quick Google Forms that teachers have. Um, and then a group, of, a group of us, administrators, classified staff, social worker, student engagement coach have been reaching out specifically to those families to determine where they are, what they need as far as technology. Um, in the meantime, I think what Amanda's advice was as far as reaching out to the counselors and then reaching out directly to those administrators connected. Um, I know I've talked to dozens of families at this point about trying to get a whole, get them what they need from hotspots to Chromebooks. Um, and I know for the most part, there's going to be somebody there almost every day at the building. And so even in those cases where if somebody needs something pretty quickly, if they call, we can get that kind of a turnaround within 24 hours as we're working in more of a system that's going to be in place for people to be able to make those requests. So in those emergency situations, reaching out directly to the school, directly to those administrators, um, and including the counselors and, and we can make those connections as best we can um, in the, the deluge of emails that, that I know that counselors are certainly getting and dealing with every day. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to freestyle here and play off of a few questions I see in the chat. And this is for those who are um, helping with activities. And obviously activities are the whole new world. Kelly, you've been really engaged in the chat and replying to people's questions. So thank you for that. One question is, when do clubs start off again? And what does that kind of outside classroom activity look like in this new environment? I'm wondering if there's some, Jan and Kelly, if you have some thoughts to that. Right. 
club the club charter process started two weeks ago and uh there has been interest uh, tr uh traditionally by the uh clubs that are con continuing to recharter every year uh the application charter application is available on the the website and through all of the leadership instagram and social media um, the uh, leadership class is very very active they're planning a, a spirit some spirit weeks in the month of november and they are just finishing as of midnight tonight the class elections student body officer elections have occurred class elections will be over tonight at midnight unless there's a runoff and they're doing everything they can to keep the spirit up through the social media vehicles that the leadership program uses So Jan, is it fair to say, and thank you for that, um, if a student might be interested um, and maybe has access to Instagram to follow the Cleveland Leadership Group there? Oh yes, anybody can log on. Great, thank you for that. Um, so Yoka's putting some of those Instagram accounts in the chat. Although Thanks, I wrote it wrong, I'm one just really auto corrected. So stay tuned. <laughs> She'll put a few Instagram accounts that if you're interested in following, because I would say that that's one of the very best ways to know what's happening if that's an option for you in terms of that technology. Well said, Kristen. I, I, I'll just pause and give a shout out to JJ on our board who um, tries to stay as connected as possible with all the different Cleveland accounts and promote that through the Cleveland PTA. Instagram account too. Um, great. So I, I, I'm going to, I'm kind of popcorning around on different subject areas. So thank you for bearing with me on this. Um, there's a couple of questions we have about support for students with students who have a 504, especially in on an online environment. And I'm wondering if there's more advice on ways for um, families to engage with their students to help support that process in this distance learning environment. Is that you, Amanda? Are you? Um, there we go. Yes. So, uh, so five hundred fours are uh, managed by the school counselor, and so um, those counselors typically, on a like on an annual basis, we'll go through and uh, work with the family and work with the student to see if there's any adjustments that are needed. Um, their uh, 504 plans are actually accessible to all of their teachers um, from the moment that they're in class. And so teachers are pretty good about, um, about having a good sense of what's available. I would also encourage you to work with your child to, uh, to really reach out and communicate with teachers. One of the biggest uh, pieces of feedback that I've been getting from students is especially when um, kids begin feeling overwhelmed, they feel intimidated to actually ask questions during a whole class session, right? Because um, they feel a little on the spot in that way. And then as I've worked with kids, a lot are also um, hesitant to go to office hours. But the truth of office hours is Oftentimes, teachers sit alone at their office hours. Counselors sit alone at our office hours waiting for kids to come. And so I just would really encourage students to leverage and ask for that. If those times don't work, ask for a Google Meet. Those things are so easy for us to, um, to put together. And if you have a student on a 504, if one of your kids is on a 504 and you're needing um, to talk through a need for adjustment, you should reach out to that teacher or to that counselor as well. Um, I will say right now in full transparency, the number of things, this is, uh, I'm going into my 27th year in education. This is by far the busiest year I have ever had, um, especially with my work in my home. And um, we're, we're doing everything absolutely as quickly as we can. But um, 
and and I know that 504s are something that we're kind of in process with, right? As we have a lot of 504 students on our caseloads as well. But if you feel like your situation right now is something that's more pressing and urgent, just please reach out and let us know and we'll do our best to, to help with that. Thank you. Um, any follow-up from any panelists here, additional thoughts? No? Okay. Um, I'm going to read one that I think is coming up in a few different ways. And, you know, Sean, you sent that email on attendance yesterday, and but I think it's just good to talk about attendance a little bit and just tracking synchronous versus asynchronous. And this is specifically um, from a community member who says they it's about attendance and understanding the need to record attendance, but with eight classes and more, more than eight different ways to <laughs> mark attendance, it can be very confusing. And especially for some students who are traditionally more organized. And so um, some students seem to be marked absent twice for asynchronous classes, even though they attended or completed the work. Is there any um, way to standardize attendance procedures for asynchronous learning or um, with that, or maybe just a better explanation on how attendance for the audience this evening, how you're navigating that and those concerns that when they come up? Um, absolutely. So I, I and I'll, I'm, I'll try to make the asynchronous advice as, as best I can, but I kind of want to preface with uh, even I think the nature of attendance and what it means in a school is dramatically different now. Um, I think before in the past in person attendance is what we use to gauge engagement um, and that's not necessarily the case now. Um, the real purpose in attendance is to meet the state mandated seat hours that we can so that we can remain accredited and continue to offer credits for our classes. So um, I hear you in, in the struggles and frustrations that are really real for parents and for students. Um, I, I joked with Joanne, you know, even a couple months ago, if I could get my hands on that auto dialer, um, you have no idea what I would do to it at this point, just because of the frustration that that brings to people. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we advocate for that as well as administrators and as teachers. Um, it's, it's gotten better, um, certainly from the teacher perspective, as teachers have been able to find new and consistent ways to, to see or remind. Um, what I put in the email that I just kind of want to go through my advice for, for students that I work with um, pretty consistently for asynchronous is you go on the Canvas page, you see what they've assigned for the day. Um, typically, that's going to be an assignment that you should be able to get done that afternoon. Sometimes it's a really small question that teachers are using just to make sure that they can log your attendance. If you can't get that assignment done, you shoot the teacher an email. Um, if a teacher makes a mistake, which they, they very well might do, um, and you're marked absent, you would email that teacher and and determine if that was a mistake that was made. Um, the teacher can go back and change attendance anything within seven days. Um, and if it's more than seven days, there's a Google form that they would then send to our um, secretary who would change the attendance. Um, and overarching all of this, I think whenever you're finding a place where it's a source of frustration or there's a barrier between um, the teacher or the student um, or some confusion, you can always reach out to me. Um, so my email address is on there. I, I really pride myself on trying to make sure that I get a quick turnaround on responses. I think since I sent that email yesterday, I mean, I've had some really thoughtful and productive conversations with families and students. Um, and the other thing that I think I would mention is that attendance doesn't show up on transcripts or college applications, right? I think a lot of the parents that I've talked to are really worried that, you know, missing classes is going to impact something with the student's future. And I would say that the most important part is the engagement that you have with the material in the class um, and that that's going to supersede the annoying phone call or the that annoying absence that's going to show up. Um, it's really about that that bit of learning that you can get from asynchronous. Um, and I, I can understand all of that frustration. Um, just taking a quick look. There's a one day and the teacher said they could not change it. Yeah, some teachers um, don't know how to change it. Um, I think right now one of the things that's happening is that teachers, similar to students, have so many things that are flying at them all the time that, that it's, it's hard for them, honestly, to keep it all in their head as, as it's coming. So we send out reminder emails. Um, even if reaching out to me, it's not, um, no one gets in trouble for anything. It's simply a conversation about how I could best help support them in navigating taking, taking attendance or taking asynchronous attendance. Thank you for that. I'm just going to do another follow-up. Um, 
and this is a question, I, Sharon, I see in the chat, but I think we got it another way. Sometimes it can feel like during synchronous time, teachers are taking quite a bit of time just to take attendance. Um, thoughts on that, Sean? And also, um, I'm going to do a follow-up question. I don't know if this is for you or Joanne. What does attendance really look like? How, like, does, is a student being asked to sh turn on their their video or you know, like engagement? What what that might look like? So that's a two-part question. Yeah, I, I think I could try to answer both, and then Joanne, if I'm missing anything, please feel free. Obviously. Um, so, sorry, could you repeat the first part again? I already forgot. Yeah, it. <laughs> no, it's all right. Um, some teachers, it sounds like, might be taking up to 30 minutes right. to take attendance. So uh, typically we're trying to offer whatever kind of advice we can. I know um, there's an academy group that meets their entire academy together and so that there's two teachers that are available where they can go in the chat and, and offer options. Um, for other people, they're using their teacher assistants. So they have TAs that can monitor the, the, the Google Meet or the Zoom to be able to see who's there. Um, I think teachers are getting more familiar with the technology and being able to find ways to come back and look at it. Um, I know for, for me, when I open a Google Meet, about two hours later, I'll get an email that indicates to me who came to that Google Meet. I have no idea why I get this and other people don't get this, but these are the kind of things that we're trying to find out and then share amongst each other to help make that more efficient. Um, I think Amanda kind of mentioned this earlier. Everything just seems to take longer. Um, and so even as we problem solve and collaborate together, um, because we're not around each other all the time, you know, a, a collaboration of a group of teachers in one subject could take, um, you know, 10 minutes, and then in other cases, it could take 30. Um, so it's just kind of balancing that that length. Uh, there's the standardizing attendance. Um, and I, I do kind of want to get to that. And then I'll get to this the second part. Um, attendance is standardized, for the most part, uh, the same email that I sent to parents is the same email that teachers get. Um, so that idea of for synchronous attendance, you participate in a video class um, for synchronous or, or asynchronous. If you email the teacher on the day of something, that means that you attended um, posting any canvas coursework that's been there that counts. Um, even if there's a discussion board, really any kind of engagement in canvas or Google classroom that'll count for that attendance. Um, and then the second part you you'd asked, could you repeat that one for me, please? Yeah, and thank you. I, it was, it's not fair to have a two part question. So sorry That's okay. about that. <laughs> I'm trying to juggle a lot of information. I, it makes me empathetic to the teachers and facilitating these conversations in real time. Um, uh, it's a question about uh, what, how do folks feel about allowing kids to have their cameras off during synchronous classes? And I, you know, honestly, I didn't know and I asked my student this because I don't know what the policies are. Um, so maybe just talk about that a little bit. I think it, I'd find yeah. that useful and I think some others would. Yeah, um, we're not going to require students to have their cameras on. Obviously, we want to encourage engagement, but I don't, I don't think it would be presumptive for all of us to assume that students feel comfortable sharing the space that they're in. Um, you know, where they're living and even that they have a camera. I mean, there's some there's some students that don't have access to that right now that we need to track down and get Chromebooks. So there's no standard policy. Um, the one policy that we, we really want to encourage and we have all of our teachers trying to encourage is making sure that um, every student has a picture of themselves. Um, one thing that's really missing. So if you don't want to put your camera on, whatever that image is needs to be an image of yourself. Uh, the one thing that's really missing for teachers is that they're not seeing students. So, you know, I mean, it's going to be weird um, later on in the year when we come in person, you might not even recognize the people that are in your class because you've seen, you know, an emoji of them for, for a while or, you know, their favorite band. Um, and so we're trying to encourage that sense of community amongst our classes as best we can. But we can't require the, the cameras to be on. Amy. Yeah. Can Fiona chime in on her experience about cameras? Thank you. I was actually just going to ask the student in the room to elaborate there a little bit. Yeah, so from what I've experienced, a lot of people don't have their cameras on and I completely understand that, like, that it can't be required. I have noticed that if my teachers are like, hey, can like more people turn their cameras on? Like if they encourage it without saying like, you're going to fail this class if you don't do it, like obviously no one's saying that, but just like a little bit of an encouragement, it does lead people to turn their cameras on. So I think it would be nice if more teachers would do that because that definitely makes the class like a lot easier to engage with. 
So I think that that would be like, if the teachers could just like encourage it a little bit more, I think that it could cause some people who like do feel comfortable like sharing their space, but they just like didn't want to before. Like I think if a teacher just like says that it can really help. When Fiona saw the everyone on this front screen has their cameras on, she was like, oh wow, look at this. When you can see everyone's face, how nice it is. You know, so I mean, anyway, yeah, yeah, that's her, that was her kind of thought. Thank you for sharing that perspective. Um, it it, it does, does feel nice to all be in the Zoom room together. And I, I just wanna understand what Sean was saying too about not everyone has those access points in the same way. So um, I, I can only imagine how that's been as navigate, navigating. Um, so I, there's a lot of questions. Um, a couple questions have come up about, especially for those who are maybe juniors or seniors, um, what, what does it look like to prepare for the next phase, knowing that uh, distance learning is going to be probably here through what we, we know for sure end of January, but um, all indicators point to a little bit longer. Um, I'm wondering from some of the leadership here, thoughts on that or advice for families who might be in that uh, 11th or 12th grade. Um, well, I'm happy to answer questions just about post high school planning and college planning. I really hope that your kids all uh, participated in our tools to build your future that took place today. If for some reason they didn't or if there are some additional sessions that they want to go to, uh, the hope is that those will all be, we recorded them and so they'll be accessible on the district website, hopefully beginning tomorrow. So there's some great ones. Um, there's a lot that's happened in terms of pivoting in the world of college. And so for juniors and seniors, they're able to, um, to access district-wide live virtual college rep sessions. Um, so that's something that I sent out as an announcement uh, to senior parents and kids last Friday and then to juniors, um, junior students. So those are just for students to go. It gives them a good opportunity to really begin connecting with some um, with some colleges. And I would say that's a rose in all of this, that um, it's provided accessibility district-wide of all colleges really wanting to come and access PPS as a whole. So whereas sometimes there were just um, colleges that would just come to a few of the PPS high schools, they're now accessible to all students, um, which is really positive. And I think if you want to investigate Maya Learning with your child, it's an easy login. It's linked to the, the quick links on the very front page of Cleveland's website. You can go log on through uh, an instant Google login and there's just all sorts of different assessments and investigations that they can do. I will also say that the world of college counseling is changing in some dramatic ways because of the lack of accessibility to SATs and ACTs. And so uh, my observation is that what has been a conversation for a long time has become um, very much like a, a complete revolution of moving to test optional for many, many, many colleges. So you can expect to see that as something that um, will continue to have impact. And the colleges, the sessions I've been to with admissions um, folks have really indicated that they're intending that that will probably be something that will stay the move to test optional, so. Thank you for that. Any additional ads there from other panelists? Um, I'm gonna follow up with another question. Um, and this is actually an interesting question we got this afternoon. What options are available for students for whom the current system is just not working? Can they transfer to an online school? What about taking dual credit courses? We have that awkward pause. I, oh, I'm no. not quite sure who to call out on this one to ask. So maybe I'll, Joanne. No, I'll jump in. I'm sorry. I had to. I was. Uh, had to get my mouse over my uh, my unmute option here. You know. <laughs> um, Certainly one thing I, I do want to encourage is that if your student is um, having difficulty to really to reach out to the teachers and to counselors to see, you know, what things can we do to help 
um, facilitate the learning for your student. Uh, you know, one thing that, you know, I've seen and I've actually had emails from students where they, you know, they've expressed a frustration, for instance, that they're not quite sure how to navigate how to turn something in, but they've done the work as an example. And I can tell you that if you reach out to that teacher, <laughs> the teacher's going to be able to tell you and be, and, and, and really facilitate you getting that work in and then guiding you through the process that, so that you understand. Again, we've been working with staff to make sure that, you know, that there's clarity um, on their Canvas pages so that you can see exactly what you need to be doing and where things need to go. So, so again, please reach out. But should, you know, should it be a situation where you feel like really my student would be better served in a different learning environment other than Cleveland? Um, there are options, um, you know, to different, you know, different online, I think private schools, um, other online options uh, for your student to uh, transfer. Um, and certainly we would welcome them back with open arms um, if they feel better, you know, joining us again when we're in person. And I think if Amanda Weber Welsh wants to piggyback on anything that I've said or Sean. Yeah, you know, one thing that I would add, we do, um, we have a, a program called Reconnection Services uh, through the district, and that's really for students who are not on track to graduate and have been struggling within the traditional system outside of this world that we're currently in um, of COVID. And um, my sense is that every week we kind of gain more, everyone is, is learning exponentially, <laughs> right? How to negotiate all of this, um, I think teachers are learning what can reasonably be expected, right? I think we are in a unique position within Cleveland of being having eight classes, having once a week when students are seeing their teacher in a live um, format. And so I think that there's just a lot of stuff that we're learning and adjusting to. And, you know, I actually really think that's what this time calls for is an ability to kind of pivot and be reflective where we need to be reflective to see what's working. Um, you know, it's it's helpful when we're hearing um, from students or teachers what's not working. It helps us to be creative about how we can do something that might end up um, fitting a little bit better and to be direct with that question. There's not, um, there's not direct online options that we can offer within the Portland Public Schools system um, right now, this, um, and, you know, I will say having been, having stepped into a classroom, and I know that the administrators can also talk about this, that, you know, when you get into those classrooms, there's, it's a really, there is a sense of community in those, um, in those classes. I, I'm also the parent of a junior, and um, one of the things that she's talked about is, you know, just being able to be in the small groups, right, that they're kind of meeting each other and, you know, sharing contact information and finding creative ways to be doing projects together. So, so we're, we're a few months into this very new way that we're really working to do things this year, and I think we'll continue to adapt and adjust. Amy, you're muted. Good. You didn't need to hear what I was rambling on anyway. <laughs> I was verbally processing. I have two questions. And one of them's about, like, uh, I'm just going to go into the question of community. I, I know as, you know, in PTA, we got a lot of requests early on about what can we do? You know, we can't have in-person events, but how do we build community? And I think, Amanda, building on the comment you just shared, um, I'd be interested to hear from Fiona how you feel connected to other classmates right now. And then also um, from maybe Jan or Mr. Hunter or others who are doing that work on um, building traditions within the Cleveland community. Um, is there anything also that for those of us on the call tonight can do to support that? So maybe just starting with a student's perspective on what it's like to be in community in your class. Yeah, it's definitely very different. Like, 
it's not the same. And like, I think no matter what, it's not going to be the same because you just don't get that's like the talking to your peers and stuff like that. I think that a, it is really helpful when like people are participating in class and they have their cameras on or like breakout rooms are nice, but breakout rooms are also kind of tricky because people also still don't feel comfortable having their cameras on. So I think that like, it's nice just if people are like participating. I also think it's, it would be helpful, like it's helpful to be a part of like clubs and stuff. So I'm part of the key club. So that's nice. Cause I get to like see people through that. And I mean, I think that it's just kind of hard. Like, I don't know if there's really a way to make it like there's, I don't know if there's a way to make it seem the same. I think it's just like getting involved with like clubs and maybe different like events when they're offered, like all that type of stuff, just like see different people can be nice. Thank you for that. So kind of opting in when you can. Can um, I something? Oh, sorry. Sorry, who said that? Oh, uh, hi, I'm Viviana. Hi, are you a student as well as Cleveland? Yes, I'm a, I'm a junior. I'm awesome. Smart. Yeah, I would love to hear your perspective as well. Welcome. Oh, hey, I'm good. Um, as for perspective, I'd say, I don't know if I'm speaking for everyone here, but breakout rooms have been probably the biggest thing for getting to know people. And um, I mean, they're really awkward at first, but uh, I've noticed that um, in the first week of school, I was the only one with my camera on. And now it's like, probably like three quarters of the class. So it's almost like every time another person puts their camera on and then they do it the same the next week, it just, you know, more people get used to putting their camera on and seeing people. So um, breaker are definitely probably the best thing. Cause it's like, you see people once a week, it's hard to, I had six classes with someone I didn't realize for like a week. I had six classes with someone, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. I, I thank you, Viviana, for speaking up and, and sharing that perspective. Um, I think it, it's just nice that we have some students in, here tonight to just in community and talking. So thank you for that. Um, yay. Shout out to the students. Um, Mr. Hunter, do you have some perspectives on just tradition and building community? Well, <laughs> I guess I'm in the same position that most of us are in, and that is that we're just trying to get a sense of everything that is happening and this kind of overwhelming for so many. But I do think that it is heading in that direction as we began to get um, clubs and organizations uh, geared up to process more. And I think you'll see, you'll see um, more community building and things coming together. Um, there is a group that is specifically uh, working toward that type of thinking. And so um, I just think it's just difficult though um, to try to, I think the students said it right, you know, that is, 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 is hard to do that. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to really hear from the students themselves and we have not been able to do that because I think they know more about it than we do. And so we need to continue to set up things so that we can hear from our students and find out what they think and feel as to how we can progress and move this forward and build a better community. So it's, it's, it's taking some time, you know. I appreciate what, uh... Viviana and Fiona said about breakout rooms, and I know the administration will tell the staff that. I think that's very, very important that the staff be aware that these are examples of things that kids are looking forward to. And I think I was cut off the last time, but when the cl club charters come in at the end of the month, the leadership uh, organization is gonna plan a club fair and everybody will be notified about that through, again, through social media, uh, Instagram. Leadership has an Instagram account and a Facebook account that people, that are things are posted on daily. Um, communication is extremely difficult. I answer every single email I receive every single day. 
because there are some very, very good, very, very good questions kids are asking, and I'm sending them on to the, the correct people so they can get involved. I also think the season one for athletic workouts is going to help a great deal because kids will finally see one another, even though they're in masks and they can't probably know who they're talking to because that's the way I am. Um, this is this is tough, but kids are mo way more resilient than adults. So I have great faith. Thank you. Um, I don't know if our athletic director has anything to add there. Um, I, there are a few questions about athletics and just wearing masks. How do you know who you're talking to? Yeah, I saw a couple in there. They weren't quite questions, so I wasn't sure how to answer them, but um you know we have a lot of uh requirements and restrictions that we're working under while we're doing this at the track so you know we have all our kids have to be in pods of no more than 25. um so there are definitely especially as we're getting going and we're figuring out how best to do this it's gonna be a little chunky um and we're seeing that but we also you know we've only had two days um of it going so each day we've had completely different kids and um, we've still kind of seen that benefit. Uh, I just want to show this because I think it's hilarious. Uh, today, uh, a couple of our freshmen met one of their teachers and they, were, they told her that they were like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm meeting a celebrity because I see you every day, but I've never seen you. Um, so for, you know, especially for our freshmen who don't know anybody right now, um, getting involved in this season one uh, is a is a great uh, opportunity. And as I said, we're going to keep adding um, more pods as we can. Pods are limited if we have enough coaches that are cleared. And again, because this whole thing is totally optional, I cannot require my coaches to do it. Um, but you know, if we have uh, uh, parents and things that are like interested in volunteering, we can find a way to get, you know, um, you in there and kind of help increase our offerings. But uh, yeah, it is very limited and we've been working just so you all kind of have a background athletics um, all the ADs, nine of us and then all of our supervisors and the whole department have been working since August <laughs> to get this going. So, you know, for us, it's a great first step because we've got permission finally and that permission doesn't come at the school level. It comes at the district level. So we're hoping that it kind of trickles down to everyone else. And they'll see that if this is positive and it's going well, oh, maybe um, clubs can meet outside at the stadium too, or, you know, so we're really hopeful that it's going to be a positive first step. But, um, you know, even though it may not seem like there's a lot of planning that goes into, oh, we're just throwing kids in pod pods, we have been campaigning since August when we all returned to work at the very beginning to kind of get this back for our kids. So, and it's not practice, it's conditioning, it's connection, um, it's not tryouts. You know, so it's a totally different season than what our seasons will be if we get to progress into that, which is all controlled by OSA, not the school or the district. So, awesome. I just want to say thank you for that. I, I have to say there's um, a, a few folks who are there with students, and I just want to say hi to some of the other students who are on the Zoom call this evening. It's really great um, to have everyone be a part of this. And I, I, I noticed when we were talking in the last 15 minutes, a few more students kind of joined in. I think thanks to Fiona and Viviana, like sharing their experience, um, encouraged a few others to say hello. So hi, and um, thank you for being here as well with your families. Um, there's been a few questions that have come up and this, is, this goes to, I, I'm gonna kind of pivot and talk about like uh, if, there's two parts to this. One is, um, I think Amanda, you noted we're holding office hours, but no one's showing up. And then the, conversely, some families are feeling like they're contacting teachers and there's a delay in reply, or um, it's not consistent on when they check um, for when something's been checked in or something like that. And so for some of the families on the call and students too, if they're feeling like they're not getting a response from a teacher, what's, what's kind of the next step in that? And it goes back to maybe where accountability and the conversations of accountability might be for you as teams. Really what, what I would ask is that you really need to reach out to an administrator. And again, each of our vice principals is aligned with a counselor. So if you know your child's counselor, right, um, 
then you would reach out to that VP. And if you're like, Joanne, what the heck are you talking about? Email all of us, right? Um, so it's Sean Murray, Margaret Barrios Brown, Christy Mice, Joanne Watkins, because then we can help facilitate and troubleshoot what's going on. Um, Cause as you may know as well, um, our, our teachers are, you know, some of them do come into the school and they work from the school. They call themselves the building squad. Um, but we have teachers that have um, small children that they're navigating childcare. Um, they have a variety of family um, configurations as each of you do that we're navigating um, with distance learning. Um, and so we're here to support them and to help um, facilitate their best practice. Um, so, um, and it's not in a way, um, it, it's really, it's best for you to reach out because that way we can, we can find out what's going on or if there's a disconnect and then we can facilitate uh, that answer to your question, facilitate that communication that needs to be happening. Um, sorry, I'm interrupting someone trying to talk. I had a quick suggestion. I haven't had issues with any of my teachers with um, like them not responding to my emails. But, um, you know, in assignments in a canvas, sometimes I think they see it faster or more quickly if you put it, if you put what you're needing to talk to them about in a comment on the assignment submission. Like, let's say you were confused or you need to check into office hours, um, even texting on Remind if some of your teachers do that. It's just easier to get in touch than I'm guessing their inboxes are just filled with students trying to get in touch. So uh, yeah, I would try that. Thanks for that suggestion, Viviana. That's fantastic. Another thing that some people could keep in mind for getting in touch with teachers is first of all, like staying at the end of like a synchronous class, the teachers will normally stay if you're just like, hey, I have a question or something. Also, I mean, this, you might have already tried this, but like if you find out when your teacher's office hours are, I've been to those before and that has been super helpful and I was there like the only person there so I got like a lot of help in math. So I mean it might be different because like if the teacher's not responding maybe they aren't doing office hours or something but like doing like staying behind at class like at synchronous classes I think that that could be helpful. I, I think maybe in, instead of asking the adults these questions, maybe you ought to ask the you seem like they got the answer to it. <laughs> Honestly, I was thinking the same thing. So thank you for that. And again, I can't thank the students enough. Um, I, I almost want to ask the students this, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to land in kind of one last question here and I'm going to ask the students to reflect on this and then maybe we can have some of the admins as well. Cause it, we're running a little after eight and thank you all for making time and being here again. But what do you think about if there was one thing you could improve about distance learning and being in community with your classmates right now, what would be that one thing that you would be like, oh, it'd be really nice if Something that I don't know if this would necessarily be like the one thing, but something that I think is kind of unnecessarily confusing is the inconsistencies in like attendance first of all and just like every teacher is doing like different things like and that's completely reasonable because obviously all the teachers can't do the same thing but there's just like so much to keep track of and I think the one thing that would be helpful is attendance because I think that's something that like nobody really wants to have to spend as much time on as I think has been happening and so I think I saw someone mention this in the chat earlier, but I think that if there was like a consistent attendance among the teachers, there might be a reason why that can't happen. But I think if that was an option, then that would be really great just because then that's like one less thing to worry about that like isn't, that's not really relating to like actually learning. So I think it's kind of just like, it can be hard to like, just have to think about that instead of like your actual work. Thank you for that. Viviana. Curious to know if you have any additional thoughts on that. What would be that one thing? Yeah, um, I was going to talk about something, but for attendance, definitely, I actually just did attendance for today. Um, 
my history teacher does this really simple um, quiz. I think surveys are actually like a really good way of recording attendance because it's kind of like an easy point to show that you did like whatever and it, it's you can do it for any class like let's say you have to read something for bio you can you know answer that in the quiz and show that you're doing your stuff asynchronously or like with ceramics i don't have reading every class to do you know before the next one so just a little quiz to say hey i was present i'm checking in um that would be a good way to have uh, attendance requirements be more uniform. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, you know, I'm hearing something, and I, I just want to credit Janet, our VP for the PTA, who's also reflecting and helped me organize these questions. There's a reflection on like how to um, teach our students to be advocates. And um, I'm hearing some of that with the students who are here, but also um, it just the adults who have shared tonight. And, um, you know, that's where I'm kind of reflecting on like, oh, yeah, like, what can I do as someone, you know, has a student who's juggling all these things, help them be stronger advocates with their teachers. And it sounds like we've talked about a lot tonight on just reaching out and letting folks know if you need a little extra help. So I appreciate that. Um, Joanne, I want to just leave in the last few minutes for you and your team for any additional reflections or thoughts, um, things that your team's been thinking about that you want to share with community members who have joined us this evening before we wrap up tonight. Our teachers as well have been reaching out to students in a variety of ways, like to get their feedback about how things are working and actually adjusting their practice. Um, one of our biology teachers, for example, got some feedback from students about how something on her Canvas page would be easier to understand if she kind of switched the order, and she did that. And one of the things that we did, and uh, every Tuesday afternoon, we have um, all staff meetings that are a way for us to do professional development or PD. And so one of the things that we did, not this past Tuesday, but the Tuesday before, we had our teachers share out some of their best practices with Canvas. And this Tuesday, they worked in departments on standardizations that we can all make, uh, including like how to take attendance for, because many teachers are using surveys or Google Forms to record attendance. Um, and so working on really a set of standards that all of our teachers um, can adopt um, that will ease their practice. And then when I've gone to department meetings as well, the teachers are all sharing their ahas with the technology. You know, if you just click this, or here's a neat way to put students into breakout groups, or one of, I, there's another biology teacher that showed a really neat collaboration activity that he did where he had the students in breakout groups, but he, he had them all interacting on their own Google slide and he was able to see all the slides and he popped into the groups when he needed to ask them a question or kind of redirect them or they were doing something about the carbon cycle. I, I will tell you poop emojis were involved, but you know, it was, <laughs> um, but it, you know, uh, you know, excrement is part of biology and it, it was actually perfectly valid, but it was just a, and you know, he shared that, you know, with his peers and they're like, oh, you know, I can adapt that practice. So um, just know that, you know, the teachers are actively engaged and the district has actually put together some some good supports for teachers around the use of Canvas. Um, so I think you'll start to see um, more and more alignment and standardization, um, you know, at Cleveland. And do continue to give us that feedback because we build on that feedback as well. Um, and I do, I will say that again, you know, as Amanda Weber Welsh has pointed out, when I've gone into classes, you know, even in this remote setting, I've seen some really powerful teaching um, and I know that um, the teachers are, you know, they're deeply invested in working with their students and also deeply invested in improving their practice um, so that um, it can be a successful year for all of us. Thank you. Um, for our panelists, are there any other um, final reflections thought to have? Um, I, I just, I can't thank you all enough for spending a good hour and a half um, talking this evening. Um, again, this is something we're recording and we will share with the community for later, but um, Jan, looks like you might have something you want to share. 
Well, I just want to make this comment. I know this is difficult for everybody, but I don't want the magnificent nature of our high school to get lost in this. We're all in this together. We're going to get back together. I'm not sure who Martin is, but I pray that he is wrong, that we're out for the rest of this year, because I have a bet that we're going to be back in April. But I, this is a really, really good place. And please do not think it is not because of the circumstances we're in. Great people, phenomenal students. That's why I miss them. If our kids weren't great kids, I would have retired a long time ago. So please hang with us. This is very, very good. It's a good way to wrap up the evening, Jan. Thank you for that. Um, Jan, I, uh, oops. Yeah, go can ahead. Jan and put her, can Jan put her email in the chat? Someone just asked about that. That'd be great. And then I just wanted to, I put this in the chat, but I want to make sure our school social worker is planning to offer some parent sessions really around looking at motivation. We've heard a lot of parents um, asking questions around that, um, as well as, you know, finding some ways to offer support for you. And a new one that she just alerted me to that I, I put in the chat again is this Reach Out Oregon Warm Line. Um, and that is actually for parents. I would, I would want to suggest it for if you're a parent who is in need, um, then this can be a good resource to be able to, um, to work with other parents. I also want to um, suggest it that if you find yourself having some capacity where you feel like you could offer some support to other parents as well, I would also reach out to this warm line to see if they can use some volunteer support because we have a lot of families who, you know, who are really struggling and who are trying to negotiate things. And I think we can be really good resources to one another as well. So, and hopefully we'll find some ways to really nurture and build that in the Cleveland community. I think especially bringing in um, our new families and offering support. Um, so this gives me a lot of ideas about things that would be helpful to do. Thank you for that. Any of our other panelists, any final thoughts for this evening? Are you sure? Is your chance? Um, I will just say, uh, I, again, so much gratitude. We truly are all in this together. And for those who haven't been able to attend, I just want to encourage you to join us for uh, our PTA meetings. Our next one is November 18th. And as I mentioned, this part of this one, Principal Watkins has been an extraordinary resource in joining us for the top of each meeting to give school updates, as well as Jan Watt, who's the bridge builder of Cleveland. Um, and making those community connections tirelessly and uh, it just a huge gratitude to all of you for um, spending the evening on Zoom yet again. Um, Zoom fatigue is real, um, but when we invest this energy and just um, come together as a community, it feels good and it's been really nice to see so many faces, both students and families this evening. So I just want to say thank you to everyone.